Hey there. Um, I wanted to take the time to make a decent video to show to other telecommunications engineers out there, and even those of us who are not technical, but just curious into what goes on behind the scenes uh, in their company or in whatever their environment they may work in when there is issues and when uh, the, the us technical people have to act quickly to resolve them. Um, I got a ticket uh, for a problem that is not of your normal moves, adds, and changes. It's of a mild potential complexity um, that requires possible work with an internet service provider. And that's where a lot of people really get hazy. Um, oh, excuse me. If you work in an environment where uh, you deal with big phone systems and stuff like that, you can be stuck doing real minor changes for a long period of time, especially if that's actually your job is just do those moves, ads, and changes. When you are in a uh, work environment or a school environment, uh, they focus on orienting you towards that stuff. Maybe basic troubleshooting, but never really working with the provider and how to deal with that. So this training I hope is a little bit unique in that I oriented around I'm trying to prove a scenario that will aid me in working with an internet service provider to come to a solution because that is a mystery. So we got a ticket that basically says that uh, originally it was a site in Corpus Christi can't call the dispatch number for our site in Houston. That's it. And us engineers um, have to understand that when we get a ticket that's all it's going to say. We can train our users as best we can but when it comes down to it, when there's a problem, that's pretty much all the information we're going to get. Um, and we need to work with the user, with the customer, in order to get more, and we need to do a little bit of basic troubleshooting. So someone says they can't call a number. The first thing I do is probably call that phone number, whatever phone I'm near, see if it works. If it does, cool. You know the entire world isn't up in flames. You know it's probably something specific to that site or the environment that that one site is in. Um, so I call, and it works. Okay, what next? So I get on the phone, and I figure out, um, you know, more about more about the problem. I try and troubleshoot a little bit further. So I uh, take them, and I have them call long distance to, like, Best Buy in New York, you know, because it's a long distance phone call. And they can call long distance to New York. Uh, so, okay, so their long distance carriers are, are working in the area. And so I get to another site. I go to Tyler, Texas, and I try and have them call in the dispatch office in Houston. And lo and behold, it fails. So that's a sign that there's something probably wrong with a long-distance carrier or our provider in our Houston office. M most likely. It could be one or two small weird things, but it's most likely that. And when we troubleshoot, we have to understand that that's what we have to go for. We have to go for the most likely resolution to our problem. Even if you have a hunch that maybe it's something else, if it's not likely, don't go at it just yet. It could prove to be a waste of time, it could prove to be a rabbit hole that you spend way too much time in when the problem is just in front of your nose. So think of the problem being somewhere on a rope, and you don't know if it's on the left side or the right side. At any opportunity, cut the rope in half, and then that solve the first half of the rope. Because if it's a 50% chance that's one problem, knowing that it's that 50% is gone, you can work through the rest of the rope a lot easier and it just helps you moving forward. Plus, the odds are with you that that's going to resolve the problem anyway. And it saved time for the business, saved money, and uh, you look like a hero. <laughs> um, so, uh, that's that's where we're starting. Is um, my, my inclination is that it's most likely a problem with the local provider, and I want to see uh, if uh, when that call is made from Corpus, that I, if I can receive it on the local gateway, um, and if I do receive it, how it's being presented to me. You know, if it's being presented to my phone system any differently than the rest of the phone calls, and if it's different than what it was before. As I haven't made any changes to the phone system, I suspect it's either a presentation problem change from the provider, or that it's not even making it to me and it's dying somewhere at the long distance carrier. So let's hop in and look. So what I've done is I have uh, taken an IP communicator and I've registered it to our Corpus Christi facility. And 
what I can do is make outbound phone calls from my virtual desktop here in the data center. So this is going to be a good easy way for me to test this on the fly without involving anyone else. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to SSH to my gateway in the call manager, er, sorry, in Houston. I'm going to log into it. Open it up there. Next, I'm going to, well, I'll do this last actually. I'm going to open up another terminal session with the phone system in Corpus Christi. There it is there. Next, I'm going to get the phone number for the um, call in question. So they're trying to call the dispatch office. Uh, the dispatch phone number, and I don't remember what that is off the top of my head, so let's log into Call Manager and figure it out. Look up dispatch. Sure enough, it's 8615. So I know that extension off the top of my head. In fact, I already have it in this phone as a placed call, so I'll just hit redial when I'm ready for that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on here, change settings, log all session output to a file I have on my desktop called trouble. And I'm going to change the window scroll back to a large number. And then I'm going to do terminal monitor, top T. Make sure logging monitor is on. Make sure I see a display. I do. And that indicates that it's working. And do the same thing over here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to Scroll back. Oops, I don't want to. I actually want to. There's a way to clear the the screen, but this is good enough. And I'm going to run some debug commands while I make a phone call. So on the Corpus side, I'm going to debug voice. What's it called? BTSP. I do this because that's uh, the call control information that's used to from the carrier to me, and this is these are POTS lines, so I can't debug what I'm going to debug on the other one, which is a PRI. I'm going to debug all. And over here, I'm going to debug voice. Um, no, no, no. I'm going to debug ISDN Q931, which is the um, uh, the the second level, the layer three information that comes from your PRI provider. And I should be able to, oh, actually did I, uh, did I set this one to log? I didn't. Let's make sure I do that. There's trouble. The same thing over here. Apply. Apply the file. And that's that. And uh, let's make an outbound call. Uh, this might be really loud. I apologize. We see it going out on, on corporate. So at this point, the audio stopped working. Um, so I wanted to take a moment to voice over. Basically, the outbound call out of Corpus um, went to a fast busy the first time. And so now we're trying to figure out why, why I went to a fast busy. So um, what I'm going to do is uh, point out that on the Houston side, there still was no, uh, no inbound. So I'm going to redo the call and see if I can't get the expected result, which was that recording of the number is no longer in service. And after a couple seconds, um, I do get that recording. So to me, that's almost a definitive 
response that there is a problem with the provider and not a problem with my uh, phone system. What I also did on the Houston side is I debugged Q921, which is like a more granular uh, debug, which helps uh, point out that there's not even any communication coming to, oh, I'm doing it now, that there's not any communication coming to my router from the provider when this call is made. The notifications you see in the Houston side are just simple communication that will happen repetitively no matter what. It's probably as a result of an active call or just normal communication. It's going to repeat itself. When I make this call again, you would normally see, if there was actually a call in progress, uh, if there was actually a connection, a bunch of communication coming in in Q921 and 31. Um, the only reason I debug this is to see if there was anything coming from my provider that I could troubleshoot further. And the result is there is really nothing. Uh, nothing coming from the provider. There's only those messages. Um, on the Corpus side, I have proven all of the outbound calls get connected, um, have features activated, which means that there's no issues in the signaling between the phone calls, and that it gets handed off, likely to the long distance carrier, which is where I receive the audio from. At that point, I can actually take the uh, information that I had logged, and I can get the calling number, the called number, and the time, if I had time set up appropriately, to show the provider um, all that information so that they can go through and uh, trace that call, show the progress of it, and see where it died and what happened to it. Um, the combination of these two things, these two proof, proof that I didn't receive the call on the location in question and proof that the call terminated to its local provider on the question of, on, on the calling side, uh, is enough evidence to escalate quickly into your provider. Um, the <laughs> I could go into how it's important to escalate past the first person to the second person. Uh, but that's a given, especially if you've ever dealt with AT&T or some variety of, of customer service like that. Um, I hope that this information has helped you guys a lot.